Hey, people. Hey, hey, hey. Hope everybody's doing well. Hope y'all are walking in strength and all of the above, man. Uh, this is a great night. I want to come on tonight. I've been kind of um, having these candid conversations with with uh, different people. Last night, I, I did it with some powerful, uh, young, progressive educated black women and then I had a long conversation with my with my brother uh, Darren Henson a great actor uh, but tonight I wanted to um, I want to talk to a brother of mine um, and he's been a brother of mine for a long time and uh, he's he's a legendary guy and his life is so interesting. Um, everybody, everybody kind of invites some people, you know, call them and tell them to come on. Cause I, I got a, I got a guy that you all are going to want to, uh, hear about and hear from tonight. Uh, he's a legendary guy. All of you have played his music, um, uh, and all of the above. You've listened to both secular and sacred, uh, from this guy, uh, cause God has gifted him in that kind of way. Um, and uh, I asked him if he would come on and just kind of talk with us tonight and kind of share his story because it's really, really interesting uh, to see where he's come from and where he's come to. Uh, and I'm waiting on him to come on. Once he comes on, he'll kind of, uh, he'll make a comment and I'll bring him in. But he's my brother beloved, uh, Brother Dave Hollister. Yeah, somebody said Dave Hollister. Yep, that's him. He's going to he's going to be joining us in just a moment. How's everybody doing tonight? Hope y'all are walking in favor and in strength and in power, and all of the above. I hope your your life um, is amounting to what God designed it to amount to. That's what it's all about. See, a lot of y'all think that wealth and success is about the accumulation of things. You think it's about getting this and getting that. Real success is about getting to where, let me text him and tell him, come on. Uh, real success is about getting to where God has designed you to be. Real success is about getting to where God has designed you uh, to be. It ain't about just buying stuff, man. It's not about just buying stuff and the accumulation of stuff. It's about, that my brother is, Pastor Don, man. I love you, man. That my brother is. He is, he is, he is. Let me, let me see if I can pull him in here, man. Dave, make a comment for me, man. Make a comment for me. I didn't turn my thing around here. Send a comment, man, so I can tap on it and bring you in. How do I... Dave, make a comment for me, man. Um, it's not just about the accumulation of things. That's why you got folk who have a lot of money but have a little, have very little meaning. There we go. Waiting on Dave Hollister. Come on, bro. Here we go. <laughs> What's up, big bro? You the man, baby. How you feel? Oh, man. Um, you know, like we used to say in Chicago, I'm fat for a square. <laughs> <laughs> man, say hello to everybody. Say hello hey, y'all. What's up? What's up? How y'all doing out there? Man, it's been a bit, big bro. I know it, man. I know it. I love you, man. It's 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 good to good to see you. I saw you a little earlier for a few minutes, you know. Right. Right. You know, I love you, too, I, I'm not man. Gonna, I'm not going to tell the people my gripe with you, though, you know? Oh, no. Don't do it. <laughs> they ain't supposed to know that, man. I'm not going to share my gripe. That's family <laughs> business. Yes, sir. That's family. <laughs> Don't I, tell them. I want to kind of talk to you tonight, bro. And just, I want it, I want it, you know, your life has been a series of, of highs, lows, yeah. uh, all of the above. Ultimately, to come to a place that God 
ordained before you even got here. Is that your phone I'm hearing? What is that I'm hearing? That feedback. I don't know that. I don't know. That might not be me. Let me, let me lower me a little bit. That might. You want me to turn me down? Here we go. Here we go. We're fine now. We're fine. Okay. Now. Okay. Um, and, you know, so many people are dealing with so much stuff. And when they see people from your vantage point and they, you know, people they have, they've admired and people they've heard, you know, Shy Town's finest. <laughs> you know, you go to Chicago and say Dave, Dave Hollis. That's why every time I go to Chicago, all I say is Dave Hollis. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Hey, that could be, big bro, that could be bad and good. <laughs> bad and good. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it, you're, it, when people think of you, they think of stage. Mm -hmm. They think of performance. They think of gifting and talent and all of the above. Mm -hmm. But they don't understand that even though they have a unreal perspective of you you've mm -hmm. had to live a very real life i want you kind of just um tell us where you've come from kind of give us narrate the beginning of your of your process from it oh wow uh man first of all you know i'm anytime me and you get together as always you know we, yes, we laugh and joke chronicle you know yes, um and you know um but, uh, man, I was born um, son of two preachers, uh, two pastors, actually. Yeah. Uh, I actually was born on the west side, but grew up on the south side. And, uh, man, it, it was no no joke, no right. joke. Uh, you know, we... Yeah, we south side. Knew, whew, we never knew, man, never knew what was going on. And it, the crazy thing was we grew up in Eden Green, All Gale Gardens, out you know, further out south in the hundreds. Right. Um, but then we came back to the killing fields, you know, in, you yeah. know, 77th and Hamilton, you know, 79th, you know, that area. Right. 77th and Damon, which was, you know, you know, you was in the middle of two gang hoods, you know. Uh, yeah. So it was evident that you were going to do one or the other. You, where we lived that you couldn't, you couldn't not do it. Right. You know, uh, and then those those people who uh, got kind of away from it, some of us would protect those because we like, ah, oh, no, they ain't made for this, you know. So, yeah. um, man, just growing up in that area, you know, it gives you, you know, it, it, it puts this certain mindset into your head. Like, man, yep. everything is survival. Yeah, you know, always on just, guard. Yeah, man, everything is survival. So, you know, you grow up dealing with even your – even your uh, relationships with women, it's, you yeah. know, because you don't know who's real and who's not, right. you know. So even even when even when you're in the streets and you're doing what you're doing in the streets, you know, why, you know, you look at women like, why are you with me? So, right. you know, you build up this, you know, this hard exterior and it's like, you know, you get in these relationships, man, then it's like, you know, they don't know how to deal with you and neither do you know how to deal with you. Right. You know, um, so growing up doing that, man, growing up in that hood, man, um, survival, 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 man. And then, you you know, I went to school, uh, got hurt and playing ball, man. And I did not know, you know, what nothing else to do. All I could do was sing, you yeah. know, and yeah. but I didn't take it seriously back then, uh, Bishop, because, you know, back then it was like, man, you, you know, Use a girl if you you know what I'm yeah <laughs> yeah man but you know I started making money at the clubs and you know the talent shows and all of that I was like hey I I might can do this and uh, so 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 what you say it was sort of a prodigal scenario yeah okay. definitely definitely you know because and, and the reason I want to say that is because you know. Um, you came from pastors. I, I came from a pastor. Mm -hmm. But man, coming from the house of a pastor does not eliminate or exclude you from making your mistakes and having your bumps and bruises. At I all. made mistakes with the best of them. 
Oh man, listen, and that's I was getting there like, you know, because of course, even though you was in them streets, yeah, our parents didn't play that. You was right. going to church. I oh, don't yeah. care who you thought you was when you before you came in them doors. Right. You you hear that from them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Is <laughs> you yeah. you was going to church. You know what I'm saying? So you can be hard as as you want to out there away from the house where we can't see it. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Right. But uh and then man, you know, doing that, having to go to church, you know, you you get on your own, man, and it's like, man, I ain't going to church. Right. You know what I mean? But it's always something that happened, man. God always lets you get so far yeah. before he pulled you back in. You right. know, or he allows something to happen for you to hey, let me let me maybe read, let me take a few steps back. You right. know what I mean? And sit down and you know what I'm saying and realist thing yeah <laughs> yeah man yeah because doc I had got so far out there so far out there man um you trying to run from who I was because I I was called at the age of 17 but I and I told my parents and they was like they were so happy yeah yeah my son yeah he was called he I said I was called I ain't say I was coming <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so man, you know, <laughs> you know, man, you get you get out there, man, and think the streets and all this other stuff, and then you start tasting the limelight and yeah. you know the money, and then the chicks really come in, and yeah. you know, man, you ain't trying to hear hear no God, but God is always present because every time you do, well, that seed is in you. There we go. That's there we go, you, bro. Every time, man. Every time. You know, how old were you, how old were you when when you really started seeing the success? Uh, well, first of all, I I went on the road with Vanessa Bell Armstrong at seventeen. Gospel so, artist, yeah, Vanessa Bell Armstrong, the gospel artist at seventeen, man, and it was just her from seventeen to nineteen. Yeah, uh, and then you know I started doing her and Daryl Coley at the same time, another gospel. But now this is the trip. Now, um, singing gospel can still get you into some stuff. <laughs> you gonna make me talk about it? Like <laughs> <laughs> you gonna make me talk about it, man? I'm to be honest with you, man. That was that was that time was crazy. <laughs> Than right. All me. Right, and, right. And then I was a young boy. You know what I'm right. saying? So it's That's like, they like, who's that little young thing singing up there? You, yeah. know, you, get, you know what I mean? You get all them, you know. Got nerve enough to be yodeling, too, you know. You understand? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying, man? I was like, oh, okay. So, you know, you feeling yourself at that age. Right. Um, and then when, when we started recording behind her, when Glenn Jones came around and started you know, writing, man. Uh, hey, cuz, when Glenn Jones came around and started writing for her and we started recording, me, Genobia Jita, who is his wife, we yeah. started, you know, doing backgrounds and I started hearing myself on records. I was really feeling myself then. Right, You right. know, so the, the success for me came when I, for me, is when I started singing with Patti LaBelle and Mary J. Blige. That's when I was like, oh, I done made it now. Right, I, right. I done made it now. You know, that's that's before before I left. Yep, way before, yeah. way before that, way before that. Um, you know, uh, Brenda's got a baby, and Keep Your Head Up came before those. Well, Keep Your Head Up came after Black Street, but Brenda's got a baby came with Tupac song I did with Tupac. That came um before. Now you Black getting into Street. something else? I'm a, I'm a, I wanna... Okay, okay, I'll leave that alone. No, man. no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. So you know that Brenda's got a baby came. Uh, before Black Street, so that really when I when I started hearing that, and it, man on the radio, I was like, "Oh, y'all can't tell me nothing now." Right. I go home. I come home to Chicago because at that time I had moved out. I moved in with Vanessa yeah. in Atlanta and all that kind of stuff. And uh, then I left when I left her, moved to New York and all that kind of stuff, man. And it was I come home and I was like, I was popping with no name. You, right, know, right. you know what I'm saying? So that that was that was and so I, at that point I was like 22, 23. Right. 23. You know, old. um it's interesting you would mention, you know, Brenda's got a baby and keep your head up because mm -hmm. you know, we I don't know what city we were in, but you, me, my brother, we all went to see that Tupac movie. Oh man, what were we at? I don't remember uh, where we were, but we went to see that movie. 
And that movie brought back memories for you. As yeah. Re as related yeah. to your relationship with, with Tupac. It was Houston. It was Houston, remember? Because I think it, it was, was Houston. Houston. It was yeah, Houston. Yeah, it was Houston. The, um, the uh, uh, father daughter, that father daughter talk. Uh, no, Queenology in Houston. Right. Yeah, yeah that's, that's exactly that's when right. We, yeah, that's when we went to see it, man. It, it did. It brought back. It brought back a lot of memories, man. And you know, I was sitting there trying not to disturb y'all, and I'm like, man, that didn't happen. I yeah, remember. That, I that remember. Didn't happen like that. <laughs> you know I what remember. I'm saying? I was like, nah. because you know, most people don't know the nature of yeah. the relationship between you, you and Tupac. Roommates. We was roommates, man. Um, right. He he actually was responsible for me coming to the R&B side. Uh, right. Uh, well to the younger R&B side, because I, I actually met Digital Underground while I was over in Japan um, doing Glenn Jones. And uh, we we were at what they called the Emza Club, and Digital Underground was at the Emza Coliseum. And uh, we were doing three sets that night, and before their show, Pac and Shock and all that. No, well, Shock didn't come, but Pac and a couple of the others, Money B, came over to the show because they heard Glenn was there. And uh, I was doing a lot of singing. He would call me to do step outs and, you know, kind of like do back and forth stuff with him. Right, you, know, right. you know how we do that. Right. Yeah. And uh, uh, Pac came after, you know, came over to me after the first set was over. He was like, yo, 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 man, you need to come next door, man. You need to shock me. I'm, I'm from Digital Underground. Shock me to hear you sing, man. He was so, a dancer, wasn't he? Yeah, he wasn't even rapping at that time. Right, he was right. dancing there. So he was like, shock need to hear you sing, man. Man, come on, come on up. So, man, I went over, you know, in between our first, uh, well, our second to, and last set, because we had time. Yeah. And, man, you know, shock pulled me on stage and just let me go. And, man, it was on. Uh, <laughs> Somebody said, down. shock G kissed me in the club. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Man, listen, <laughs> man, listen. It was crazy, man, because he just he just threw a mic in my face and was like, "Just go." Yep. And man, I ain't gonna, you know, I ain't gonna front. It was on a song called they had called Sex Packets. Yeah, and, and uh, I just start, you know, running and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Man, you know, was, I know, I know you can. <laughs> <laughs> man, I just went crazy, and he was like. Oh no! Stay on the stage. Stay on the stage. Just this one of the new members of Digital Underground. And man, after we left there, I left Japan, went back home to uh to Chicago. Told my family I was leaving at that time. Uh, my wow. my baby mom and my daughter. I yeah. told them I was leaving at that time, and I moved to Cali. That was in '89. Wow! I moved out to out here to the Bay where I'm at now in '89, man. And that was it. That so was, that was it. So bring me up to um. Teddy Riley, Black Street, bring me up. Okay, to okay. So after we only, that, we only man, got about twenty more minutes, you know. Oh, okay. After that, man, we uh, take care of home is my joint. That's Doc Mo. He's crazy. So um, after that, man, I was you know touring with Digital Underground. Me and Pop, you know, shared apartment together over in the park, uh, Park Woods. Man, just was touring with them. Then ended up getting getting my gig with Mary and. Uh, we was on the road. We was on the humping around tour, the Bobby Brown humping around tour, man. Right. And we went to um, Hampton Coliseum, and I know you know the story because I'm told you. Yeah. Before. Yeah. So we <laughs> we went to Hampton Coliseum, man, and uh, Teddy was there. Teddy was there and with Chauncey and Levi Blackstreet. Right. And uh, Teddy came, you know, behind our uh, backstage, and he was like, "I did a song that Mary and KC would do called If Loving You Is Wrong.'" If yeah. loving you is all that I have to do, I don't want to do anything else. KC would I remember that. Come, right. KC would normally come, man, and uh, and do, he would normally do the duet. But when yeah. he wouldn't come, I would do it. So right. this night he was coming, but he didn't make it in time. So I ended up having to do the song. And uh, once we finished, he, KC came, but there was another song called Mary Jane. You know Mary, Mary Jane. We I'm in love with Mary Jane. Yep. Yeah, we would do that because, you know, uh, after loving you is all I have to do because Casey and Mary was together. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And that was the last song that we would bust into. And me and Casey would just go off on stage while she waving at everybody going out. Yeah. So, man, let me tell you something. This night, Casey came on there like, uh, what's the name? Eddie Kane from the... <laughs> 
from the heartbeat sliding across the stage. He comes sliding across the stage. So we get off stage, man. We get off stage, man, and um, and uh, I'm backstage. Teddy comes back there, and he stops me walking by, you know, because I'm the type of dude I've always, bro, I've always been the type of cat. Look, you ain't no more important than me, man. You know, right. you just got a little bit more shine. I get mine one day. Yeah. So I really didn't say nothing walking past him, and he stopped me. He said, yo. He was like, yo, man, hey, man, bro, you you a bad boy. He was like, what you doing? I said, well, I'm working I'm working on a little solo thing. I got a little demo tape or whatever. He was like, nah, I don't even want to hear it. I, let me ask you something. I got a group, man. Let me introduce you to Chauncey. So he called Chauncey over. He said, man, I got a group, man. We need one more. We need one more member. Would you be interested? I ain't going to tell you what I said. Yeah, you know, I, I, I can you know me. You know, yeah. you know me. You know yeah. what I said. <laughs> you know what I said. I was like, man, you know I will. Would I, what, man, you Teddy Riley. Of course yeah. I would. You know, and I've always been a fan. So Teddy already had a claim at that time? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Teddy. That New Jack Swing was done. Guy, he had right. done Guy already. Right, right, right. You know, yeah, he had done guy already, man, and um, he was doing Black Street. We was they was living in Virginia at that time, and he was doing Black Street. And the only song they had done was uh, "Baby Be Mine" for the uh, CB4 soundtrack. So, right. you know, they they wouldn't work on another, they wouldn't work on the album until they found the you know the 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 third group, the yeah. uh, last guy. Yeah, and I told him, man, yeah. So he hadn't called for a long time, man. It was it was about. Uh, I want to say about six months after that, he didn't call. I got his number. We kind of text back. Corey Rooney is nuts. It's all right. That boy. Yeah. Corey Rooney, that's my boy. Um, so, uh, hey, Gina. Gina right on there, bro. Uh, that's my girl. That's my girl, too, man. That's my partner. Uh, so, man, six months had went by, and I was still on the road with people. I was touring with Bruce Hornsby. I was getting ready to go on the road with Bruce Hornsby. Right. Man, the night we was jumping on the tour bus. Bruce, uh, Teddy called me and asked me, so you, all, you, you ready? I said, well, man, I'm about to go on this tour with Bruce Hornsby. You know, can I, you know, can I, can I do it when I get back? Right. And he was like, man, I kind of need you right now because we need to get this album started. I, t I went over to Bruce because Bruce was, Bruce was leaving. He was going to meet us in the first city, but we was going on the bus. Right. I went to Bruce and told him, he said, man, I would never stop you. He said, man, go ahead. Go ahead. And that the rest was history, man. I got off the bus, went to Virginia. Teddy put me up the next morning in a, in a whole apartment. Gave, wow. me a, gave me my first BMW. I mean, the next day, brand new spanking 325 drop top red BMW. I had one, bro. With the same one, huh? That was my first new car. Bro, that's what I'm saying. That was, that was my first See? new car. See, man. See, uh, my first car was a '62 Buick Invictor. Sucker had a hole in the floor. I, are you lost serious? my wallet. Lost my wallet on the interstate driving. <laughs> fell off the seat. Fell through the hole. <laughs> wow, man. My man. My first car was a uh, was a Toyota MR2. I learned. Oh, so you fancy. Car. Uh, man, listen, you fancy. It was, it was, it was used, but it was mine. You, you know fancy, I mean? bro. <laughs> man, did you? I say, could uh, hear my car drinking gas. <laughs> <laughs> Sucker would go. Man, that's <laughs> that's crazy, man. And then you dropped your wallet through the hole, bro. I promise, on the interstate. Man, that's crazy. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. That's so dope. now. What was what was the the first song for you that that knocked it out the park uh that was that was actually my song mm -hmm. you you were the lead on uh it would it would have to be outside of brenda's got a baby and keep your head up it was uh before i let go yeah. It was before yeah, that was my that was my that was my jam man. yeah man it was it was before i let go and man let me let me tell you something about that song mm -hmm. i even to this day, remember we talked about this. Yeah, I hate to hear that song on the radio, dude. I hate it. What's wrong? What's the Bro, problem? Because we have just finished writing a song, right? We just finished writing a song, and Teddy was like, Teddy was like, Go ahead, go on, all right, Dave, go on in there, record the song. 
you know. So I'm in the booth, bro, reading off the paper, Bishop. I'm reading <clears throat> while I'm singing. Yeah. Man, if, if they take the music off. So you were reading when you recorded it? Man, I was reading off the paper. Wow. Singing bro, I the can't song. Tell. I can tell. Man, this dude, Teddy, tells me. I said, all right, man, because we had this thing where we would we go in demo and take it home, get it in our get in our spirit. Yeah. And then come back and do <laughs> get, it. Get it in our spirit. <laughs> get it in our spirit. <laughs> and then go back and do it. Man. I said, all right, Ted, give me the CD, man. Then, all right, let me get it. You know, I'm gonna go home learn. He said, nah, man. I said, excuse me? He said, nah, man. Uh-uh. Nah, I'm keeping that. I said, no, you're not. You ain't keeping that one. He said, bro, it's over. Forget it. <laughs> man, I had an attitude with that Negro for about nine months because it, it then became like we put out, you know, we put out Booty Call first. Yeah. And then they was like they was fighting that song. They was like, no, 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 no. We want to do something else. So then we the, the, the company said uh they was like, nah, let's go with before I let go. I said, No, y'all not. Y'all not going with no before I let go sounding crazy like that. That don't sound right. Wow. They was like, nah. I can't believe I can't believe you're saying that though. Bro, I, I hate singing it now. I can't believe you're saying that. <laughs> Teddy hate for me to say that when we do interviews. I can't man, believe you're saying that, bro. I can't stand that, man. I can't stand it. That's my jam. Man, bro, we, we, I cannot stand that. Record. As a matter of fact, I heard it yesterday. Are you serious? I promise. I was riding yesterday and I heard it. Man, I, I'm telling you, I can't stand And neither can I stand one woman. Now, see, somebody, somebody's like judging me right now because that means I don't always listen to gospel, but get over it. Yeah. I like music. Don't, man, don't get me started. I like music. Don't even, don't, don't don't get even come started. in with that. Did I see Mr. Bill Robeson on here? Oh, yeah. You saw it. Oh, Lord. That, my other big brother. I ain't going to tell you what he said to me a couple of weeks ago. But, I can only imagine, bro. <laughs> right. Right. Man, yeah, see, I ain't even, we, that's, bro, that's a conversation for another day. The, this this music that we listen to. That's a whole right, listen, conversation. We got 15 minutes. Yes, sir. How did you deal with fame, acclaim, women mm -hmm. when, when all of this happened to you as a young guy? Oh, I fell to the women. That's it. I ain't going to even lie. <laughs> when it came well, you know, in, I, 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 I saw you at Essence when you came out on the stage <laughs> and all the women started hollering, Teddy Bear. I said, oh, <laughs> Lord, have mercy. <laughs> To hey, Lord have mercy. You crazy, man. Uh, so how, how did you deal with it? How did you make it through that season? And how did you become the man you are today? Now, now somebody says you were singing one woman. Man, mm -hmm. that, was, that was the joint. But were you? No. Okay, all right. No. <laughs> it, was I, just, I was. it was a song, right? It, it was. A, and, and, and the funny thing is, because I said it, but we kind of we brushed past it. I hated that song too. Really? Hated it, man. I didn't like it. But my, you know, my first wife was like, can you do a song? She never asked me. She heard the song. I didn't even write it. My my yeah. boy Mike City wrote it. Um, and he he was producing records on he was producing songs on my next album, which was the Chicago 85 album. And he was the last producer on the album. Yeah. That song, we had done like three, four songs. And that was the, he said, man, I got one more song that I think you would kill. And man, he played it. And wow. my first wife went crazy. I was wow. like, man, I don't like that. You know what I'm saying? Because, yeah. because of what it was saying. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and and I knew where I was. I wasn't right. there. You know what I right. mean? Right. And um, man, it was Still just, trying to mature to that. Exactly. Exactly. And it and, and here's the thing, Bishop, I wasn't I, I told my first wife, I didn't I didn't I wasn't ready to get married. She pushed me into marrying her. Right. You know, and I told her, I'm not ready. You know right. what I'm saying? I'm not ready for that. I was a young man. I was twenty five years old. Yeah. At the, you know, and before man. I let go, twenty five our record had just come out. And I told her, I was like, I love you, but I'm not ready for marriage yet. I'm right. too young. You know, and she 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 baited me and got me in there, man, and it was just all bad. So when we, when that song came, she loved the song. 
we had been through, you know, she caught me cheating a few times. And, you know, yeah. that was a song. She was like, listen, I've never asked you to do any song. I've never bothered you. Can you please do this song for me? Man, it was the last song. I did it. We turned it in. And wouldn't you know, the record company was like, that's our first single. I said, no, it ain't. Wow. They said, yes, it is. I said, no, it ain't. Okay, then, well, we ain't giving you no tour support. I said, okay, it's the first single. You know what I'm saying? Wow. I, I hate the song just blew. It just yeah. blew, man. And and it just became uh, a, a top five song for me. And but, I, you, but, your, but your voice is legendary, bro. Oh, thank you, bro. That's just, that's, just, that's just the truth. You know, I appreciate your voice it, man. Thank you. Legendary. And, it's all about um, You know, this is what I want to know. Because we, mm -hmm. we only got a few more minutes. Oh, no, we good. How did you, how did you come out of the place you were and look past success, money, cars, acclaim, fame, panties on the stage, mm -hmm. all of the above, mm -hmm. and reawaken that seed that had been in you all the time? To be totally honest, man, um, <clears throat> and I might, I might get a little emotional. Um, it was like one of the darkest times of my life, man. It was back in 1993, um, uh, 1993, 90, 2000, I mean, 1993, 2003, 2004. Uh, I, I had reached my lowest um, as far as, uh, you know, just my life. You know, yeah. my, me and my first wife, we... We had went through some things, uh, was going through a divorce with her. You know, she found somebody else. And, uh, you know, man, I, I fell deep into the cocaine and the and yeah. the, uh, the, the alcohol. And, uh, man, there was a, I had a big accident on the Topanga Canyon. I, I know you might have some people on here um, that, that know where the Topanga Canyon is in L.A. Uh, on my I know Okay, on my way to on my way to a, a gig that I would do every Wednesday night, man, and the car got away from me in an accident that should have left me for dead. I survived without a scratch on my body. And uh man, I promised God that day. I said, Lord, you know, and I when when the when it was going on, I just heard the voice of the Lord said, I'm God. I'm God. Will you listen now? Will you listen? And man, after that, man, a couple of weeks later, I moved back home with my mama you know, went through that whole series of deliverance and then just start, you know, talking and building my relationship back with God. And I just told, oh, Lord, I'm ready now. Yeah, I'm ready, man. It, it was, and it took all of that, you know, it took all of that. Even though through my career, the Lord was showing me that he was still there, yeah. still, in spite of what I did, despite of where I was, you know what I mean? Yeah. I was in places, man, and and trap houses and crack houses, you know, yeah. you know, looking looking for looking for that package so I yeah. can, you know, do my thing. But God was still there and I never succumbed to what it was that I was using. Right. I never found the high that most people would find. You know, and I knew yeah. that was nothing but God, man. And uh, bro, I would do eight balls by myself. Wow. Eight balls by myself, man, and clear it in a day. Wow. And still never, still never found, man, the high that I was looking for. And the wow. Lord brought me out every time, man. And I said, yep, I got you. I hear you. I hear you, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm in. So, wow. And, and, and that prodigal son was in the hog pen. <laughs> and, and he came to himself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, he sir. He said, you know what? I'm going to go back to my father's house. <laughs> came to himself he he came to himself man, man man he 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 thought about that thing yeah you know he thought about that thing look man i i got to make a decision yeah. you know and and that's where it was that's where it was bishop it was that experience that's why i love that i love that episode man yeah you know cuz it's so close to me it's yeah. close to me man you know, and today, I even when I think about it, man, it just brings me to tears. It brings me and to tears. This is the trip about you, Dave. You know, because you know we 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 are covenant together. Yes, sir. 
And the truth yes, is, you are, you've had all of this acclaim and fame, and your name still rings on the lips of people. Thank you, Jesus. And when we come to worship, you're just Dave. That's it. That prodigal son, when he got ready to go back to his daddy's house, he said, you know what? I ain't going there with all this pomp and circumstance. I ain't going there, you know, flexing and flossing. And when I get back to my daddy's house, Jesus, I'm going to say to him, Lord, uh, or Father, I Father. just want to be a servant. One of the servants. That's it. one of the servants. Woo! Jesus. Man. Man, and I love you and I appreciate you so much, man. I love you too, bro. And I, I, I thank y'all, man, just for bringing me into the family, into the covenant, man. Um, because again, when we when we get together, we could just be us, you know. That's it. And and we it, cloud too, and, and man, for until times get better, we brother. cloud. Hey. And that Neil Robeson, oh, he, he, Lord. oh Lord, Jesus. <laughs> man, man, what what is wrong with him? What's wrong? With him? <laughs> Listen, when you find out, you let him. <laughs> right, man. We got to. We. I want to talk to you about something that I've been been talking to uh to to presiding about, man. Yeah. Uh, his project. I got another man. song too, bro. That. That's all I've been waiting on. That's for this all new I album, though, bro. I got one for this new this new album. All um, you got to do is tell me. You, you listen. I got another song. Okay. All right. All right. It's, it's a gangster too. <laughs> so we really can be ourselves, huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm with you. I'm so with now you. Listen man. to this. Mm -hmm. There's somebody watching me now, watching us now, mm -hmm. who is visiting presently the places you have been. Jesus. The struggles you have talked about are the, the struggles they deal with right now. Um, and they are in that place you were when you had that accident. The lowest place of their lives. Contemplating even teeter-tottering between whether I should stay here or whether I should leave. Mm. What do you say to them, bro? You, whoever you are, my sister, my brother, you definitely can come out. I know you hear the voice of the Lord. I know you hear the voice of the Lord because in the midst of it all, he always provides us a way of escape. There is a door that he wow. has provided for you. And all you have to do is walk through the door. Wow. Walk through the door. I, I'm I will be praying. Um and I will be praying for I, I always do, Bishop. I always do that God would protect those um yeah. that he especially his watch this his wounded anointed. Wow. His man, wounded say that anointed. again. Man, say that, that he would again. protect his wounded anointed. Those of us who have been hurt who have been drugged through the mud. And the I'm not wounds. even talking about, I'm not even talking about church. I'm yeah. talking about wounds from the past that just won't heal. Yeah. He's protecting you. And you're going through it for a reason. I was talking to the church um, uh, um, last Sunday, man, and I was telling everybody talks about uh, um, Jesus and, and the disciples on the boat and, and the wind, you know how the winds and the waves, and he was sleeping. And, and what people don't really realize is the wind came because Jesus was on the boat. Wow. It came because he was on the boat because yeah. he was trying to get to the other side to free somebody. Do you know how much preaching is in that? Man, Doc, hey, we 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 gonna have to get together on that one. He, he, Do you know how much preaching is in that? And see, see what we don't understand, big bro, is watch this. The wind. What did he do when he came? When they woke him up, they woke him up and they said, "Man, listen, listen, man, don't you care that we we might die on this boat?" Yeah. Said the Bible says that he got up, he rebuked the wind. Yeah. But he spoke to the waves. Yeah. He rebuked the wind. When we rebuke, rebuke comes to set order. Right. So he had to call the wind in the order. And who who was he calling in the order? Who is the who is the prince in the power of the wind? <laughs> the, you come on, man. 
he he had to he had to tell look here man you shut up leave yeah. us alone right now right and then y'all be still wow. we we got something to do on the other side if when he, he says just, peace be still come i on, believe Bishop. that he is talking uh to two different entities when he says peace he's telling the waters and the wind be still or peace. Yes, sir. He says, be still. He's talking to the disciples. Be still and know that I am God. Man, listen. I don't it, start nothing tonight. Listen, listen, man. You got me fired up don't already. I wasn't supposed tonight, to be bro. here, man. I wasn't supposed to be in this place. Don't but start I, nothing tonight. So I now just, look. Mm -hmm. Tell us. Bring us to, to where you are now and, and the church that God has assigned to your hands. Oh man, they we are. It's 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 exciting because man, I'm I've never wanted to do. Um, you got me over here sweating. I never wanted to do social media like that. Um, right. Be, because you know everybody is looking for. Oh man, he on social media. He doing this. He doing that. But man, the way God is blessing and growing the church, even while we're not in the church. Wow. You know, because we are the church, of course, we know that. Yeah. But, but, big bro, there, I've got people talking about, I can't wait till you open the doors. You're about to make me move to Northern California to come. Wow. To you, you know what I'm saying? It's wow. a blessing, man. It's a blessing. And God is, is faithful with monetarily. You know, yeah. we, we're even getting blessed more monetarily than we were when we were in the building. You know, and wow. I, I'm just sometimes, you know, coming from where I come from, I'm like, man, God, is this really what I'm supposed to do? And he just keeps showing me. Yep. Yep. Keep well, going. this is what most most people don't understand, Dave. When when you have gone through the things you've talked about tonight. Yes, sir. It does not disqualify you. It really prequalifies you. Jesus. The Bible says Ooh. this about Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus was a man of sorrow acquainted with grief. I cannot effectively minister to stuff I ain't acquainted with. <laughs> man, you about to start me, man. So when this cat comes off the when this cat comes off the street and he is struggling with an addiction, you can minister to him because you're acquainted. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When, when, a, when a guy comes to you and he is, he is almost losing his mind because of marital decay, you can minister to him because you're acquainted. When a man is wrestling between God and his money, yes, sir. the making of money, you can minister to him. Yes, sir. Because you've been acquainted. You know what it feels like. Woo. So, man, I thank God for our connection, and I love you, yes, bro. Yes, sir. I love you, too, man. And thank I appreciate you, you taking this little time. I know you got something else to do we talked about. Yes, but, sir. Um, I appreciate you taking this little time, man. And you can't imagine the folk you've helped tonight. Jesus. Man, I, I appreciate you having me on, man. And, and you know. We got to do this again, though, bro. Bro, you know, you know me. Let's set it you know, up. Yeah. I'm, I'm on here with you. You know yeah. that. <laughs> I'm I called him man. today and said, man, we coming on tonight. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> Listen, I love you, know, you, man. You know, in a quarantine, you find stuff to do. Hey, <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> I done become a talk show host, bro. And, you, you, hey, you, and you're doing a good job at it. I'm trying to figure out who I'm going to bring on tomorrow. Hey, man, listen. Listen, bro. You, hey, there. Cause you got a lot of you got a lot of people that follow you that you don't even realize follow you, especially from the industry. Wow. As especially wow. from the industry, man. Wow. You got a lot of people following you, man. A lot of them been reaching out, man. See what a lot I'm saying? Of them been reaching out, you know. A lot of them have been reaching out. And you can yeah. do this one. I know you can do this, man. Man. Get I love podcast, you so much, though, brother. I love you so much, though, bro. I love you, too, man. Thank you so much. Everybody, thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. Ramandis Moore is on here tonight. Ramandis, what's up, man? Pastor. Chicago. Chicago is you in the You Yes, Shout sir. Out. <laughs> That's my All right, favorite. bro. All right, bro. Love you, man. Thing, man. Thank you. Appreciate you. All right. Love you, man. Love you. Hey, I'm going to call you. 
All right. I love y'all, man. Thank you all uh, for spending these few moments with me tonight, me and my little bro. Um, wonderful, wonderful story. And the truth is, listen, y'all haven't heard it all, man. Dude is a wealth of wisdom, uh, where the music ministry is concerned, or music industry and music ministry is concerned. Um, just, just a well of wisdom and a solid, solid guy. I love y'all. I want you to have a great night tonight. And uh, you know what I got to say to you. You know what I got to say. Go get it. Because God says it's yours, man. And um, it ain't coming to you. You got to go and grab it. You have not because you grab not. Blessings, favor, strength. Have a great night.